Hi and welcome to my maths class. Today we're going to do sin, cos and tan graphs. But what we're going to do is we're going to draw the graphs. Now before we start, you need to know the basic graphs. Okay? And you need to know the tables that they work with. If you work with the sin, cos and tan graph, you will notice that the basic graph is very similar to each other. Okay, the standard points of a sin graph is 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360. What is interesting to know is that when we are working with grade 10, we are never going to adjust X. We are always going to do an adjustment to Y. So, 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360 are going to be standard for you throughout the grade 10 sections for trigonometry. Now, what is the first one? For sin, we're going to go y is equal to sin theta. Now, if you're pressing your calculator 0 and then y is equal to sin 0, y is equal to sin 90, y is equal to sin 180, y is equal to sin 270, y is equal to sin 360. You can do that and you would get the following answers. Now, this is called your mother graph. It means that this is where we start working from. This is where we start doing our work from. Now, if I was drawing, I'd have my 90, 180, 270, 360. If we start plotting, let's say our 1, 0, 1, minus 1. If we start plotting, we have 0 and 0. And then we have 90 and 1, 180 and 0, 270 and minus 1, 360 and 0. To draw the mother graph is quite easy. What I need you to do before you continue any work is make sure that you understand and you know this table. Because everything we do after this is going to link to this table. If you look, this is a nice version of the same graph that we've done. 0 and 0, 90 and 1, 180 and 0, 270 and minus 1, 360 and zero but things that we'd like to know is what is the maximum value of this graph now when i'm talking of maximum or minimum i'm referring to my y value so what is the highest point that i'm going to the highest point that i'm reaching what is the lowest point that i'm reaching so when i'm asking you things like what is the maximum of this graph what is the minimum of the graph? I'm looking at my y value. So the answer to this one would be the maximum is 1 and the minimum is minus 1. Then they would ask you, what is the range? Now, from your previous graphs, you know that range refers to your y value. Now, when you're looking at the range, look at your graph. What is the lowest y? Remember, range is related to our y, and then we're going to take our lowest, and we're going to go till our highest point. That is how we do range, lowest to highest, but emphasis is on the y. Now, if you're looking, what is the lowest y that I'm going to? And what is the highest y that I'm going to? So the range is minus 1 to 1. Now, can you see I've got square brackets? Why do I have square brackets? Because the point included minus 1. And the point includes 1. So your range is in square brackets. Then, what is the domain? Now, the domain is what we see. Most of the time, the domain will be given to you. They'll say, hey, x is an element of 0 to 360. It means, what is the drawing? Where did it start? What is the lowest? So our domain is now our x. But again, lowest and highest. So what are we doing? We're looking at what is the lowest point of our x. And what is the highest point of our x. And that would be 0 to 360. Again, can you see square brackets? Okay. Now, if they ask you what is the maximum, you must know I'm talking of the highest point it reaches. What is the minimum? I'm talking of the lowest point it reaches. Then, 
let us go to the next thing now this is an important thing and it tends to come up a lot okay it's the amplitude now what does amplitude mean amplitude means if I take the highest point and I take the lowest point okay so my highest point was 1 and my lowest point was also 1 so I'm taking the highest minus the lowest can you see what I did highest minus the lowest but then I divide it by 2 so it is 1 minus minus 1 divided by 2 so it would be 2 over 2 which is 1 so the amplitude in this question is 1 now it's important that you know the equation because we're going to start drawing graphs where a whole graph moves up it moves down it moves all different places so when we start doing that then the amplitude is not always one okay let's take the next graph if you look at this graph it is also a sin graph it is also the main points that you know it's 0 90 and 1 180 and 0 270 and minus 1 360 and 0 but what they have done is they had expanded the domain so it went from minus 60 to 360 so now we have on this side minus 90 and minus 1 minus 180 and 0 minus 270 and 1 3 minus 360 and 0 so it's basically the same pattern that we are repeating okay if you look the domain has changed but the range the lowest is minus 1 to 1 still the highest point the maximum is 1 and the minimum is minus 1 so these things have stayed the same maximum is 1 minimum is minus 1 the range what is the lowest minus 1 where is it going to 1 and then the amplitude the highest minus the lowest divided by 2 which is equal to 1 so sometimes the drawings look different but in actual fact they're exactly the same drawing it's dependent on your scale what you had used to to draw had you used 2 centimeters for 45 degrees but in this one here maybe you use 1 centimeter for 45 degrees so it doesn't matter they're the same graphs now let's go to the next graph now let's take the cos graph so we're working with y is equal to cos theta this again is the mother graph of all trig cos graphs and I told you that in grade 10 we got, we're not going to change the x now if you press it in your calculator you're going to get 1 0 minus 1 0 and 1 so you're pressing cos 0 degrees cos 90 degrees cos 180 degrees cos 270 cos 360 so if we're drawing our graph our points would be at 0 and 1 90 and 0 180 and minus 1 270 and 0 360 and 1 and then again it's joining the dots and we've got a perfect mother graph and let's look at a neat graph if you look at this again they're going to ask you questions like what is the maximum what is the minimum what is the domain what is the range what is your amplitude now all these questions are exactly the same look what is the lowest point the lowest point we're going is minus one so the minimum is minus one the maximum is one the domain what is the x value that I'm starting at I'm starting here but I'm ending here so I'm starting at 0 but I'm ending at 360 degrees my range what is my lowest point for my y value which is minus 1 what is my highest point for my y value which is 1 so it is minus 1 to 1 now look it is always the lowest number then the highest number be careful if you write it 1 and minus 1 it's incorrect okay then how do we find the amplitude it's your maximum minus your minimum divided by 2 so we have 1 minus minus 1 divided by 2 
which is equal to 1. So our amplitude in this question is 1. Now look at the next graph. It's exactly the same as the cos graph. The only difference is now they've used a smaller scale, so it looks like it's different. But it's exactly the same points. If you look at the points, it was 0 and 1, 90 and 0, 180 and minus 1, 270 and 0. And then we have 360 and 1. So the points are exactly the same, but the scale used here is different. And also, they had started from minus 60 and went till 360. So the domain of this one would be minus 360 to 360. But everything else would be the same. Okay, now our last graph. What you would notice with the 10 graph is that when I worked with the, my, uh, with the mother graph, I didn't work with 0, 90, 180, and 270, and 360. I added smaller ones. Now, 45 is a very safe number to work with. Even if you expand your sin and cos and you add the 45s, it's quite safe to work with. But also, with just 0, 90, 180, 270, and 360, you don't really see the graph. Let's just do 0. So you're going to press 10 of 0 is going to be 0. 10 of 90, you're going to see it's going to say error, which means it's an asymptote. An asymptote we had discussed under functions where we had done hyperbola and exponent where the graph goes really close to that point but it doesn't touch that point. Now at 90 you'll see it's an asymptote. Then if you go to 180, 10 of 180 is 0 and if you go to 10 of 270 again you get the error. And then we've got 10 of 360. Now if we've got our 90, our 180, our 270 and our 360 and we draw these points on 0, 0 I have a point and then I have my asymptote and then on 180 I have a point and then on 270 I have a asymptote and then on 360 I have a point but this now doesn't really give me anything because if I'm joining the dots it looks like I'm going straight but then I can't touch here so that is why we have these inside helps if you do 10 of 45, you'll get 1. 10 of 135, get negative 1. 10 of 225, get 1. 10 of 315, minus 1. So what are we drawing? If we put in our 45 degree marks, now we have help. So we have 45 and 1. And then here we have 135 and negative 1. We have 225 and 1, 315 and negative 1. We know we're going to join the dots. We're moving towards the asymptote, but we're not going to touch it. So we're going really close, but we're not going to touch it. Here, we're going from the, remember when you're drawing, we draw from left to right. So we buy the asymptote, but we're going away from it, and then we're going really close to the next asymptote, but we don't touch the asymptotes. Can you see? You never touch the asymptotes. Here also, we're starting by our asymptotes, we're going there, and then we're stopping. Again, not touching the asymptotes. Now, you must know these values of the mother graphs because once we start adjusting, we start making adjustments to the y value and then our graph gets bigger or it moves. But you have to know the mother graph. Now let's look at a neat 10 graph. Right now, if you look at this graph, again, things that I'm going to ask you is maximum or minimum. But this graph has no maximum, neither does it have a minimum because it's going on till forever. So there's no maximum and there's no minimum. And if there's no minimum, then we cannot have an amplitude. Because remember, amplitude would take the highest point minus the lowest point divided by 2. So there's no amplitude either. But you can definitely see a range. What is the range? The range is going from negative forever to positive forever. And so we have negative infinity to positive infinity. But infinity always has a round bracket. Usually in equalities we had discussed when you have greater and equal to it's a square bracket less than it's not a square bracket so you need to go and look over that but what you must remember is that for infinite and negative infinite we always have round brackets. Now look at the domain because that is the most common question asked in 10 graphs. The domain we have our lowest point as 0 and our highest point as 360. But something's happening. X cannot equal to certain values. X cannot equal to 90 
and x cannot equal to 270 degrees. These are restrictions you have to put it because x is never going to touch 90 here. X is never going to uh, touch 270. So you have to put it in. Right, now let's look at another graph. Okay, it's exactly the same graph, but again, we've used a smaller scale and we've started from minus 360 to 360. So the domain would be slightly different. Our domain again would be from minus 360 to 360, but X would not equal to minus 270. X cannot equal to minus 90. X cannot equal to 90 and X may not equal to 270 degrees. You have to put it in. The range and the minimum and maximum is all the same, but the domain is changed in the trig graph. Okay. Thank you for watching.